Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. In my last video, uh, I showed you a technique in Photoshop for doing focus stacking. It's very easy and quick to do. There are other ways to do it in other programs that will do it better, especially if you have a lot of detail. Uh, but something that I didn't cover, and it can be a bit of a problem, is when you have uh, a fast moving object like water, you do have problems uh, with pixelation. And actually, uh, I had a, a, a comment from Brett Havis, uh, and he says, Hi Adam, I've been having block pixelation residue using this method uh, and spotted the same in your water down left hand side and also far right above boulder. Uh, first noticed it a year ago, some images no problem, but others like the rivers Photoshop can't handle. Even if I make a new layer from all the blended and then delete the masks off the blended to try and rework some areas, the blocks are still there. So I thought I'd cover that and just show you how you can get rid of it quite easily uh, with the same photograph and the same layers. So let's just jump right into that. So here is the uh, original uh, image that I had in my video. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll just leave a link up in the corner here because this is kind of a follow up to that. You'll notice that, okay, the, the top layer was the one for the, uh, the leaves. So we'll just unclick that for now so we can't see it. And you'll notice that to the right of each of these various layers, there's a mask. And that's where Photoshop has taken specific points in that photograph and you can see certain areas and it's hidden some other areas. More specifically, the sharp areas are revealed and the blurry areas are concealed. So if we go down to the waterfall here and zoom in, especially this area here, you can see there's some jagged edges there, pixelation, and also down here is quite evident. It just doesn't line up. And the reason why it hasn't lined up is because that water is moving. So what we can do to get rid of that, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, probably the best way is just to go straight into the original mask. Now you'll remember that we had three separate images. We had one where the foreground was in sharp focus, the midground, and the background. Now the the background is where the waterfall is in focus and all the rocks around it. So it makes sense to go to that layer and try and sort that layer out. So in this case, it's the bottom layer here. You can see that uh, it, it hasn't masked out most of the background because that's the sharpest area in the photograph, but the foreground has pretty much disappeared because that wasn't the sharpest part in the image. But you'll notice that some parts of the background have been masked out. So all we have to do, just remember this, black conceals, so hides the image, white reveals. So if we go to click on the mask, so pick B for brush, make sure you have a white paintbrush, opacity is set to 100% and make sure that you're clicked on the mask and just start painting in those areas where you want it to be revealed. So down here, down here, uh, we can also, now just be careful here that you're not overlapping too much on some of the other sections that perhaps you don't want to be revealed. So we go down here. All right, so we've pretty much covered that, okay? Now we'll just click on the next box here and you can see that we're still getting that pixelation. So we'll just click on this layer here, make sure you click on the layer, but this time pick a black paintbrush. So X for black, make sure it's at 100% and just paint that in. Now this section here, you have to be careful because if we go over to the, over here, you'll see you'll start getting rid of parts that you don't want to. If you do do this, 
then just push X again so that the paint is white and just paint it back in. So what we want to do here is make sure that it's black and we just make sure that we go around this rock here so we're not overlapping. So we do the same thing here. It's a bit of a pain, uh, but it does a really great job. Just remember, black conceals, white reveals. And there's a little bit up there. There's a little bit down here. So basically all we're doing is just refining those areas. You probably won't find anything like that in other areas of the photograph. It's just those, just where the water's moving around. Okay, then we'll click the last layer here and just have another quick look. And you can see that the waterfall looks fine now. And then the last, uh, the last layer here is the one where the wind was moving the, uh, the foliage. So as soon as I click on that, see we don't have any mask on that. So it's just revealing the whole image. So we could put a, a black mask on that. So black again conceals that image. And there we go. And that's how we get rid of those pixelated parts of the moving water. Uh, also, uh, I should have mentioned this. If you go up to the mask here, and we've just blocked it off so you, you can't see it, uh, you'll notice that this top layer, I actually use a polarizer and the other um, layers, I didn't use a polarizer. So not only can you use this for foliage that is, was moving, uh, you could use it for uh, some detail in the the waterfall but you could also use it if you wanted to get rid of some of that glare in some of those rocks now the only thing you have to remember is that the depth of field on this particular layer was quite shallow so if i go to the foreground it's all out of focus because i only showed it at like f8 or something so just remember that but this mid-ground rock as an example uh say i wanted to get rid of some of this uh, glare then i could just go Click on, click on the black mask. Make sure you have a white paintbrush, B for brush, and then set your opacity to whatever you want. 100% will obviously get rid of all of that glare. So we could bring it down to say, I don't know, 20% 20, 20 roughly, and just start to paint over that. And you can see that that bottom layer is starting to fill in there, or the top layer, sorry, with the polarization is starting to fill in there. So masks are extremely powerful. Uh, photographers have been using them for, well, ever since the film days in the, in the darkroom and now in, in Photoshop. And it's a great way to bring things in and take things out uh, to have whatever matches your, uh, your vision. <laughs> I hope this answers some of your questions. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye for now.